To render our scene in Houdini, we need a render node. This render node will give Houdini specific instructions on how to run the render. If we don't have any render node and press the render button in the IPR, Houdini will automatically create this mantra IPR node. If I delete the node and press render again, Houdini will create a new one. Ok, let me stop the render so we can work more efficiently here. And let's take a look at the parameters in the mantra node. We can render just one frame, the current frame, or we can render a frame range. By default, it takes the first frame of your scene, frame 1, and the last one, frame 240. If you want to render a specific part of the scene, right click on the parameter, delete channels, and set it to whatever range you like. And in the camera parameter we choose the camera we want to render through. By default it's the cam1 because that's usually the name of the first camera we create. If we had more cameras we'd use this to choose one of them. Go back to the OBJ context to the camera node. As I said before, in the view tab with the resolution parameter we set the render resolution. If you are using the non-commercial Houdini license, you won't be able to render at a resolution higher than 1280 by 720. This is the maximum resolution. Go back now to the out context. This box override camera resolution allows us to change the camera resolution we just saw, 1280 by 720. This is very useful when doing some tests, because you can set this to, for example, one half, half resolution, and the render output will be one half of the full resolution. In this case, that will be 640 by 360. I'm going to leave it at full resolution. And below we have a ton of tabs, but for now you should only care about the first two tabs, images and rendering. In the Images tab, the Output Picture parameter is where we want to save our render and the name and format of the output files. If you place the pointer on the Output Picture parameter, you'll see in this small window the file formats you can use. PIC, TIFF, JPG, BMP, EXR… You're probably thinking now, does that mean that I can only export my render as images and not as a video? Yes, that's exactly what it means. In visual effects, renders are hardly ever exported as videos, but as image sequences. Why? There are a few reasons, but the main one is that renders tend to crash. Imagine you are rendering a fire simulation and exporting it as an MP4 video file, and after 10 hours of rendering, your computer decides to crash. Those 10 hours of rendering will be wasted forever because the video file will surely be corrupt. You'll have lost all your work and will have to repeat the whole render from the beginning. But what if instead of exporting it as a video, you export the render as an image sequence? If your computer crashes or there is a blackout or whatever, it will affect only the image that was being processed at that moment the rest of images will be fine, and you could then retake the render from that specific frame instead of starting again from the beginning. So here in the output picture parameter, I'm going to choose the folder where I want to save my render. I'm going to create a new folder called render, and the files will be named crowdrunners.f, the frame, since it's an image sequence, each image will have a frame number. And now the format for the images. .exr The EXR format is one of the most used in visual effects. It's a file format that can contain a huge amount of information and it works very well, especially for compositing. If you're just doing some quick tests, you could save the render as JPG or PNG, as they are way lighter than EXR. 
And let's move on to the rendering tab for the more technical aspects. With the rendering engine parameter we tell Mantra which algorithm we want to use to render our scene. In most cases it will be the physically based rendering, an algorithm that mimics the behavior of lights and materials in real life. By default, it's the ray tracing engine. That's what the render view says up here, top left corner, ray trace. That's the one we were using when we run the render. If we set it to physically based rendering and run the render again, now it will say PBR physically based rendering ray trace. Okay, let me stop the render. We have now these two checkboxes. Enable Depth of Field and Allow Motion Blur. As you can guess, the first one will turn on the depth of field. Some objects will be sharp and some others out of focus. And the second one will turn on the motion blur. But these two things, especially the depth of field, are usually done later in compositing. So we are not going to use them now. And below there's a ton of tabs and parameters, but the most relevant for us is in the sampling tab, the pixel samples. When we press the render button here in the render view, what Mantra does is send out rays from the camera to the 3D scene. Let me exit the camera view so you can better see what I mean. Okay, here is our camera. When we hit render, Mantra looks through the camera and starts sending out rays, shooting rays, to the 3D scene. Boom, boom, boom! Every time a ray hits an object, it means that that object will appear in the shot. So Mantra stores the color of that pixel hit by the ray and represents it in a 2D image. And that's how Mantra works. It sends out rays and stores the color of every pixel found in their way until all that frame has been analyzed and we get this rendered image. Right now, when we press render, we can see a preview of how the render is going to look, the final result. It starts as a pixelated image and eventually becomes more detailed. This is happening because by default, we run the render in the preview mode which is this colorful mosaic in the upper bar. As long as this is turned on, Mantra will send out rays from the camera to the whole scene at the same time. And thanks to this, we can see this preview as soon as we click on Render. But if I turn off the preview mode, now the rays will be sent out first to the center of my scene and then gradually outwards. This way the render is faster, but the disadvantage is that we are only able to see those parts that have been fully rendered. Excellent! So now that we understand how Mantra works, let's go back to the out context. The pixel samples are the amount of rays we send out per pixel in the X axis and the Y axis, which will usually be the same number. The more pixel samples we set, the more rays Mantra will send out from the camera and the more detail it will get from the pixels, but the render will also be slower. By default, it's set to 3x3, but if your render comes out too noisy, it happens a lot when using environment lights or very dark scenes with lots of shadows, you can increase the pixel samples until your render looks clean. These renders we've been running so far in this window, the render view, are not generating any file. These renders are only visible here, in the IPR or render view in Houdini. We'll use the render view to do some tests and set up a render configuration, or whenever we want to render a single image. When you are done tweaking the camera, lights and render settings, you can go to the Mantra node and press the Render to Disk button. This will export the scene to your computer as an image sequence. But if you don't want to export the whole thing, you just want to save this image you have just rendered in the render view, right click on it and save frame. Here you choose where to save the image. 
I'm going to call mine test dot and the file format I want, jpg, for example, and save. You'll get this small window saying that the image has been successfully saved. Thank you, Houdini! Perfect, so now we have our camera, our light, which looks good enough. Well, the shadow is a bit too dark, so maybe we can decrease the intensity. Select the light node, go to the shadow tab, and set the shadow intensity to, for example, a half, 0.5. Now the shadows are a bit softer, and I think it looks better than before. Okay, in the render view, up here we have two lists. With the first list, we choose the mantra node we want to use to render. The only option I have is this mantra IPR, because that's the only mantra node I have in the out context. But if I create a new one, I'll now be able to choose between these two mantra nodes. Say you configure one of these mantra nodes with more pixel samples than the other. You could then use this list to compare both results. And with the second list, we choose the camera we want for this render in the render view. Please note, the one in the mantra node is for the final render. And the one from this list is for the render view. By default, it's the ROP camera, which is the camera set in the corresponding mantra node. If we take a look at the parameters of the mantra IPR node, the value of this camera parameter is the ROP camera. I could choose here another camera. If I had, for example, three different cameras for different angles, here I could switch between them. Or I can also set this to scene view, which is the view we have in the viewport. Right now in the viewport, I'm looking at the scene from this side. So if I set this to scene view and relaunch the render, Mantra will be using that view as a camera. Awesome, I think we are ready to go. The light is working fine, the mantra node is all set up, we just have to press the render to disk button in the mantra node, and <laughs> enjoy the wait.